Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to try to predict the Bitcoin prices using a deep learning model. So the first thing to do is to get our data. We are using the Yahoo Finance API. We are going to write a simple DNN that stands for Dense Neural Network. And we're going to draw our entry and exit points on our strategy. So this is a very simple model and it's more to learn how to mix financial data and data science together. But I hope you enjoy, so stay tuned. Okay, so open the terminal and the first thing to do is to install all the necessary libraries for our project. So just write pip install pandas numpy tensorflow y finance and sklearn if you have any problem with these installations just leave a comment below and i will try to help you out after your installations are completed let's create a new notebook in jupyter and let's give it a name so in my case i'm calling it bitcoin predictions and now that I have that, I'm going to start by importing all the libraries that I just installed. So I'm going to install YFinance, import as YF. I'm going to import Pandas as PD. I'm going to take NumPy as NP. I'm also going to take um, matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. And we are only missing TensorFlow as TF. And that's about it. So now that we have that, we can see that we have YFinance, that is the library that is going to help us to extract our Bitcoin prices from the web, from the Yahoo Finance API to be more specific. We have Pandas and NumPy, this will help us to manipulate the data. We have Matplotlib that is going to help us to visualize the data and TensorFlow that is our deep learning library. We are also going to import from sqlearn.model selection. We are importing the train test splits. So this is going to help us to split our data frame in different data frames. So we are going to have a, a train, data frame, a test, and a validation. But we are going there in a minute. So now let's actually take the data from the Yahoo Finance. So let's take yf.download and let's download the prices for BTC-USD. So the Bitcoin prices in USD. After that is done, we now have a data frame with all the Bitcoin prices since 2014. So around 2000 rows. So we're just going to change slightly our data frame because we don't need many of these columns. We are only going to use the close price and the date. So let's start by resetting the index. So right now the date is an index, so it's not a column like open or high, right? So we are going to reset this index and we are going to pass the flag in place equals to true. That means that we want to make these changes permanent, okay? So we're also going to get rid of all these columns that we are not going to use. So we are only going to stick with date and close price and our df looks way better now okay so now that we have that the next step will be to actually see the data so we can use our plt that is our matplotlib library and we are going to plot the df dates against our df close price okay and we can see that we have a nice distribution here and lately the prices really rose a lot. The difference is like huge, like the double. Anyway, let's move on. And the next step is actually to standardize our data. 
So let's start by actually take our close price and let's subtract the mean of the close price and in pandas it's very easy you can just say dot min and we have to divide it by the standard deviation and we are missing here the division and now we have prices around the mean okay so one is the mean and we have prices below the mean and you know above the mean like here way above the mean so now it's time to try to understand what's the general idea of this model so instead of trying to predict like the next prices like let's say i'm feeding the network this price and i'm trying to predict this and then i'm feeding this and i'm trying to predict this we are going to do something different we are going to feed sequences of 15 prices and we are going to try to predict the next one so the 16th okay so let me give you one example so imagine that the prices are you know very weird and they are distributed like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten just bear with me eleven twelve thirteen fourteen and fifteen okay so it was a very weird month when the prices were distributed that way okay so each day uh, the price increased by one dollar and the idea is we would pass like this sequence to our model and we would wait that our model will give us back the 16th price okay so imagine in the next day the price was actually 16th okay uh, 16 so we expect to give this to the network and have this back so let's try to do that but before that we still have to split our data sets so we need like a train data set a validation and a test data set so the model will be trained on the train data set and it's also going to see the validation data set to help us see if we are overfitting our model or not but the test date it's not going to be seen until we actually test uh, our model okay so we're not going to train it on this date data so let's start by splitting the train and the validation and let's call it something like x train and x val and we are going to use the train test split function that we imported from sqlearn and we're going to pass our ef close it's already normalized we just have to be careful to pass the test size and our test size it's going to be 20 percent we're going to split this 2300 rows uh, in 20 percent to our validation and we have to set the flag for shuffle equals to false we don't want to shuffle the data around so not yet at least so we can do that and we can see that uh, if we run it of course we have you know typo here is just size and we can see that now our x train ends at 1800 and then it continues on uh, the validation set so far so good let's also split the validation set into uh, validation and test so we're going to use the exact same uh, line of code here so i'm going to copy it but I'm going to split the validation instead of the close price. And I'm going to split it between the validation and the test. Okay. I'm also going to change the, the percentage because I want to divide it with 40% instead of the 20% that we had before. So now we have three different data sets train, validation, and test. Okay. Cool. So now that we have that, we can move on and actually build, I would say, the only tricky part of this entire model. So we have to create like a TensorFlow dataset to help us process um, you know, the data in a better way. 
So we're going to create a function that we, you can reuse in the future. And actually, I reuse this function multiple, multiple times, and I adapt it to my needs. And this function, it's going to create a, a data set, and we are going to call it windowed data set. And it's going to take a series like this X text, a test. We are going to take uh, a window size. In our case, it's going to be 15, a batch size, and a shuffle buffer. Okay. So before we keep writing this function, let's define first our window size that is going to be 15, as we discussed before. The batch size, it's going to be 32. And uh, we can call it just batch size 32. And the shuffle buffer, it's going to be defined later. Okay, let's not worry about it. But let me just explain what is this batch size. So as we saw here, we have like one sequence, but we don't want to give like one sequence at the time of the mod at the model. We want to give several sequences at a time. So we are going to pass like lists of lists, and inside of each list, that actually they are not lists, they are tensors. But let's pretend they are lists. But we are going to pass multiple lists, okay? And we are going to pass actually 32 lists at a time. So 32 sequences in each uh, input to the model. So this is a batch. Okay. We are also going to have 32 outputs, of course. So let's keep going here and let's run this cell. And here we are going to start by transform our series in a data set. So we have to call tensorflow.data dot data set and we are going to use the method from tensor slice and this has slices sorry and we're going to pass our series here okay and if we actually do that right away we could say we could print this ds and call this function on the x train <clears throat> with a window size of window size or let's keep it window size batch size and the shuffle buffer it's going to be equals to our x train dot shape zero so the number of rows and if we print that we can see that now we have a data set object so a tensorflow data set object and we are going to manipulate this object with a tensorflow inbuilt method okay so the first thing to do is to create these windows of 15 elements. So let's say ds.window and let's pass like our window size. Whoops, window size plus one. And why plus one? You're asking because look, right now we have no outputs, right? We only have x train, x val. So where are our outputs? We are we need to create them. So to do it, we are going to pass like 16 elements to our, you know, data set. So we're going to create like um, sequences of 16 elements. And at the end, we are going to remove the last element. And this element, it's going to be our output. Okay. So that's why the window size is like 16 instead of 15. So let's move on here. We also have to pass two arguments here. So the shift and it's equals to one because we want to aggregate these elements together. So this is going to shift here. This is here. Okay. And finally, we want to drop the reminder equals to true because at the end, if we don't have enough elements to create like a sequence of 15 elements, we don't want any sequence at all. Okay, so let's move on. And the next step, we can even print our DS right now. So unfortunately, now we have a nested um, data set. So if we print our for, let's say, E in DX, and if we print, let's take this line here. If we print our I, we can see that nothing is showing. So 
it's because it's actually nested so if i added another for loop so a in i and i if i print a now and let's just give it like empty line just to see it more clearly we can see that actually we have a list of 15 elements as we asked here and it's it's cool but it's actually everything is nested it's not yet like a list right so we have multiple tensors but they are like living you know outside of any concept of you know one list so they are living separated so for that we're going to flat them out so we can just say ds.flatmap and since we have the word map here <laughs> it means that we can do something else so we are not only going to flat these lists or these data sets in this case we are also going to batch it so we can say lambda w and we can say w dot batch and our batch is going to take the window size again plus one okay and now if we use just one for loop for e in the s and if we print our i we can see that we have like this nice list of 15 elements 16 sorry because again this last element is going to be our output okay so now that we have that we can just start by shuffling our data so we can say ds.shuffle and we can pass our shuffle buffer And we are also going to get our output out of this list right now. So let's do it with another lambda function. So lambda functions are anonymous functions. It will be the same as writing like function outside and pass it here in the map. And for our W here, we are going to have like, we are going to return like um, a tuple of w and all the elements except the last one and we're going to pass the last element okay so here we have like these elements here and this is going to be our input and we have this last element as our output okay so so far so good so we are only missing one last step that is like the batch so we're going to give it like a batch size of 32 discussed before and i'm also adding this method that is optional that is the prefetch method so it helps us to cache the data and not take it over and over again and now that we have that we have finally like our data set and this was the trickiest part i promise the model itself it's way easier with tensorflow these days so now that we have that we can check our you know data front and data sets sorry and we can see that yeah we have like a prefetch data set and if you want to see what is inside you have to look into it and you can just say for i in the s you can print the i and now we have our inputs and outputs prepared so again batches of 32 lists or sequences and each sequence has 15 elements like as you can see here so and in each batch you can also find the outputs like here you know so we have here 32 outputs that correspond to each of the batches so it looks good i would advise you to take some time to you know explore a bit um the data sets and how it looks where the outputs play with the values a bit this will definitely help you to understand it better and just bear in mind that with a function like this you can prepare a data set for more advanced models like lstms or even like using the functional apis and have you know branch models for more complex examples